Hello, this is Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com and you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Today I want to show you a, a really cool wooden uh, wall telephone. This is a Monarch and uh, Chris and Tom sent this in from Wisconsin and basically um, we've done another uh, video of this telephone uh, an earlier video uh, or one or two of them and this is kind of a in the middle of the road video just to kind of show what's going on with the telephone and uh, it kind of looks like a big mess right now but you have to uh, wire these telephones and you want to make sure that everything that you're you know, you want to test all your uh, different lines and what you're doing. Uh, the bell basically here has a patent date on it, I believe of April 15th, 1902. So you're looking at some equipment uh, that's, that's pretty old. <laughs> this, is a, this is an old telephone. And um, just because a patent date, you know, says uh, April 15th, 1902, doesn't really mean that that's when the bell, you know, that's the date of the bell, but that's when it was patented. And so they had a request that you be able to crank this telephone and also ring the bells. And uh, I'll kind of go into that a little further about what the problem with that is. But uh, I tried to go ahead and uh, fulfill their request. Now, basically, what we've been going through is. Um, taking a lot of the old wiring out that uh, really wasn't any good anyway and it had all been cut. Someone has been in this telephone and, and has done a lot of different work to it. I'll show you the little tag there and that's the Monarch uh, tag that they have in there and which would be right in the uh, battery uh, compartment. So this kind of gives you a look, and although it kind of looks like a uh, a big mess right now, this is you know you have to check everything, and uh, so you're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of spaghetti there, and so there's a little bit to um, wiring these telephones when you want the bell to uh, ring when you turn the crank, and the reason being is that. If you were to hook up the uh, crank to the telephone line and crank it when you put this telephone in service, you'd ring all the phones in your house. And so what you're doing is you're producing a back voltage into the telephone line and uh, basically the telephone company might catch on to that and kind of think you're trying to blow up the universe or something. <laughs> it's uh, It gets a little crazy. so. You have to install a switch on these, and some of them can be different because not all these cranks are created equal. But if you look, and I'm going to try to point to it, if you look back in this area of the crank, I had to remove the crank and everything and mount a switch. And you have to mount it on the crank because if you mount the switch on the wood and the crank moves any, then the switch is so precise uh, it'll get out of whack. It actually has to be mounted to uh, the crank itself so it stays stationary with the crank and any movement won't cause the uh, switch which is uh, pretty precise. And if you can see here what I'm going to do is with one hand I'm going to turn the crank a little bit and you're going to see that movement, that engagement and that's engaging on a switch that we installed. Now there is some contacts that are original to the uh, crank but that's to uh, to make the connection for the voltage that the crank creates. Now all these lines are new. Um, everything that we've put back into the telephone um, you know we have some cloth covered cord that we use and um, it's more original to the period of the telephone and you're just going to see a whole lot of stuff going on up here at the hook switch and um, 
you're going to see quite a bit of things going on right here at the uh, at the back of the bell. So it's just basically in the middle of the road, and I believe on this telephone we're going to install a modular port somewhere up in the hook switch area so that they can simply plug a modular cord into it on the inside of the telephone. Now although at this point this looks like a mess, it's what you call a working version of a mess. So <laughs> this telephone works. Anyway, we're going to do a couple of little checks and I'm going to go ahead and ring this telephone. Not too bad for a telephone that's probably around 100 years old. With original equipment, this is an original bell. Now I'm going to give you some dial tone. I'm going to set the receiver capsule down and uh, you're going to see a a red light flash when I kind of tap on the uh, transmitter here. I'm going to kind of tap on this and you're going to see a red light flash which is uh, a modulation indicator. You see that light lighting on the analyzer? One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello. One, two, three, four, five, six. Hello. Now, the receiver capsule that's in this uh, on this telephone is original. The uh, workings inside the receiver uh, are, are original and so they all had to be kind of gone through and there's your dial tone. Also the transmitter is original. This is the inner workings of this transmitter is original to the phone. And as you can see, they're still working. And we're going to try to use them. Uh, you know, it may not be perfect, but, you know, you're talking about uh, original parts here. And if you can get away with using the original parts, uh, that's going to be a real plus, you know, because they are original. Although this phone has had some work done to it, uh, it's in an original state. And so, you know, they've done some, you know, they've added some screws here and there to kind of bracket some things. Now, another thing we had to do, we added this piece here. There was just a nut there, a brass nut. And we also added a uh, one of the screw downs for the block here. Up, uh, That was a costly little guy here because people don't like to give these pieces up. They don't like to turn loose of these because they're specially made for these type of phones and so they can get, these parts can get a little pricey. But um, anyway, what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to go ahead and ring the phone again and I'm going to show you that this switch over here actually works because I can make the, the ring cycle go away if I just barely move this and engage that switch. So here we go. I'm going to wait for the next ring cycle. See how it went away? Now I'm going to wait for a ring cycle and I'm going to release it. Take it away. Take it away. I'm going to wait for a ring cycle. There you go. So now I'm going to stop the ring. Give you some dial tone. And basically what would happen is normally without the proper wiring and a switch in line to uh, take you away from the telephone line when you crank the telephone, which is going to make the bells ring, would shoot a back voltage uh, into the telephone line and ring all the phones in your house. It, it would actually ring them. So you would be... Um, pumping a back voltage into the line and that's probably not a real good ideal. I don't think it would hurt anything but like I said, you know, you just it's, it's probably not a good ideal. So here we go. We're going to
Now, when I turn that crank, you can watch this red light on the analyzer and if there was any back voltage being pumped into the analyzer this red light would light and kind of stay steady and you don't see that and the reason why you don't see that is because the switch is doing its job and there is a you know there's a couple of different ways to wire these but in everything there's a right and a wrong way and um, so it, there's a little more to wiring these when you um, are trying to break the line voltage away from the crank voltage so that you don't dump uh, uh, voltage into the line that shouldn't be there so you have to control it by switches and uh, it takes a little bit so there's a little more to it than than just uh, you know wiring it up to the line and trying to get a, a, an extension phone out of this telephone another thing in the old days and you may not be able to see it too well they used the hinges they would solder right to the hinges and then uh, make their connection that way they also would loop wire over into the other side you know they had to get a connection from one side to the other um, another thing that uh, Tom and Chris had uh, sent in a plastic bag, they sent this little, uh, this is a wire keeper, is what this is. They didn't know what they were. And then there was another piece they said that they weren't sure of, and I mounted that here. And what this is, there was two wrenches that went in this uh, bracket. They weren't sure what this bracket was. Well, this bracket would be mounted on the the back of uh, the door of the back of the door of the telephone and it would hold a wrench and then another wrench and that wrench was to adjust the bell um, there's some nuts and things on this bell that you would adjust and uh, so it was a little it was like a little tool kit kind of thing and if they search around enough they might get lucky enough to find these little wrenches they're just flat little wrenches um, that would help you adjust the bell and they came with a telephone. Uh, unlike now, when you buy something, you don't get anything to work on something with it. <laughs> or the tool's so cheap it won't last. But uh, I've actually seen some phones with the original wrenches in these uh, little keepers. And, um, and that's really cool. And they have the keeper, which is a very hard part to find. So, you know, the wrenches are probably as hard to find but they're out there and they might even find them and uh, if they do well they've got the keeper already and they can just put the wrenches in there not that they would ever probably use them but uh, you know it would just kind of look cool if they could find them and if I locate one before we get the telephone um, if I locate a couple of them before we get the telephone done I will certainly grab them for them but considering this is a, a really old bell uh, and you know it, it may not be perfect nothing on this telephone may be perfect it's original equipment and it's working and so uh, you know that's a plus so we're gonna just try to keep everything so I'm gonna go ahead and uh, crank the crank a little bit one more time And then uh, we're going to ring it one more time. It takes a lot of voltage to ring these bells. And I'll give us some dial tone here real quick. This is uh, Dennis with A1 Telephone Service and Repair, A1 Electronics. You can reach us on the web at www.a1-telephone.com. And you can also reach us at 618-235-6959. Thank you for watching and have a great day.